Hi, my name is Will Wagan. I make paintings, drawings, and combines, which incorporate 2 and 3D materials. The content of my work is concerned primarily with American socioeconomic disparity and the absurdity of attempting to process reality in post-internet culture. I've always experienced art through the historiographic and psychoanalytic dimension. Much of my work has arisen from short story writing and automatic drawing, the content from which arises from reading texts related to psychology and American history nonfiction books relating to class and race. I also listen to a lot of, a lot of storytelling podcasts while sketching and making compositional decisions. The framework of narratives and how that structure is reflected in our perception of the world is one which I like to examine through painting. I'm currently focused on making work dealing with the theory that one thinks best through their body. I have recently learned that the world is mapped onto our conscious through bodily perception first. Cognitive apprehension is secondary and comparatively unreliable. The work I am currently planning will be in response to corporeal desires, which is in contrast to my former working habits. Processes related to obsessive illustrative techniques composed of fine motor skills with picture-based intent. I would also like to incorporate humor into my practice. A quote which stood out to me in the October 2021 issue of Art Forum, written by Michael Dango, in the article Rape as a Border, on the art of Mona Hatoum, states, when an event is so atrocious that it begars our attempts to describe it with the gravitas it demands, comedy, paradoxically, may be a more viable register. Greater Divide, the exhibit and review, is not a rape joke, but it is a joke nearby rape, beside it, there to carry us through it. It provides an analysis of rape we can survive, not laugh off, but survive. This quote resonated profoundly with my intention of making art that is potentially humorous when handling some of America's most troubling societal woes related to our recent brush with fascism. To creatively analyze America's latent desire for totalitarian leadership, I look to the grotesque models of representation which engage the bodily reaction of laughter. A meaningful tool of survival is the ability to laugh amidst incomprehensible times.